Okay, hi everyone. Good afternoon. We can see that everyone's slowly joining. Um, we're just letting everyone in through the waiting room. Uh, but I think we'll get going and, and get started with the webinar. So welcome to, to the Meet Network webinar, um, Learning Tools for Ecotourism Development in Mediterranean Protected Areas. I see that we have lots of people from all around the Mediterranean joining us for the webinar today. We really appreciate you all taking the time and are really excited to share the work of Meet Network um, and also to celebrate the launch of our new Meet Network online learning course. So we have lots in store and we hope that the webinar will be interesting, engaging. We're going to use some Zoom polls um, to ask you a few questions at different points through the webinar. So make sure that you're paying attention and let's get started. So one second, oops. So just a few things before we start. Um, on the slide, you can see our agenda for the for this afternoon. Um, we also want to thank our donor, the Malva Foundation for Nature, who awarded Meet Network a learning grant to set up the online course we'll be presenting today. Um, and we worked with our partners, Global Footprint Network, and we also received support um, and the IUCN Mediterranean, and we also receive support from the Travel Foundation and Conservation Training, which is part of the Nature Conservancy. Um, also, just to acknowledge that a lot of the core work of MEET, which we'll be presenting today and talking to you about, was developed in the NECBC MEET project and also through um, an EU-funded interreg med project called DestiMed. So just one last thing, just some webinar golden rules before we start. So I'm sure you're all very familiar with Zoom at this stage, but um, if you all want to keep your, we will be recording the webinar. So if you don't want your face to be seen, please switch your video off. Um, please also keep your microphone muted throughout the webinar. We are going to have a question and answer section at the end of the webinar. So if you have any questions pop into your head, just put them into the Zoom chat and we'll try and answer them at the end. Um, also just to say that please ask questions. We really want this to be as in engaging and interactive as possible. So um, don't be afraid to speak up and all your contributions are really valued. So um, here's just a quick look at who's presenting today. Um, before we start, we also want to get a better sense of where you're all joining us from. So as there's quite a few of us, sadly, we don't have time for individual introductions, but you should now all see a poll pop up on your screen. So if you just want to take the next minute to complete it, I think it's just going to ask you about the working sector that you're from. So my colleague Ardena is just going to launch it. Perfect. Great, I can see we've got some answers coming in. Give it a minute. Okay, so I can see we've got a lot of people working in tourism, some people from protected areas and conservation, um, also a few, a smaller number of people from government. Um, or government sort of based organizations. So that's great guys, we're just gonna move on now. But thank you for doing that. Um, oops. Okay, so um, first, our first presenter today is Carla Daneluti, who is the executive secretary for the Meat Network and the Ecosystems Resilience and Spatial Planning Manager at IUCN Mediterranean. Kyle has over 10 years of experience working in nature conservation, and she's worked, um, most of her work is centered around the role of protected areas as drivers for conservation and communities. She's also one of the founders of the Meat Network, and today she's going to be speaking about, or telling you all about what Meat is. So I'm gonna hand the floor to Kyla. Well, thank you so much, Natalie. Hope you can all see my screen. Okay, so and thank you so much to all the participants that are here today. We are very proud to have this big audience interested in our activities and on the work we are doing here in the Mediterranean, trying to support conservation and ecotourism development in our beautiful region. 
So during my short speech, I will explain what is the Meet Network, the philosophy and actions behind it, why we are here and where we are aiming to go. So first of all, who we are. So the Meet Network is actually a network of protected areas, which was formally established in 2018. And we're working together to conserve uh, the Mediterranean region's natural and cultural mosaic while promoting a new model of ecotourism to the market through the development of high quality ecotourist products and innovative tools to manage their impact. But before we enter into the details of meat, it's important that we understand in general terms the, ter the context of tourism in the Mediterranean and in Mediterranean protected areas in particular. We know that the Mediterranean is a cultural and biodiversity hotspot and a very beautiful place on earth to be. But we also know, and because of them, most likely that it's also one of the world's uh, mass, leading mass tourism destinations. I just wanted to share with you some data around uh, what impacts mass tourism are causing. You can see here in the slide that around 50% of Mediterranean shores are urbanized uh, some sea and sand tourism infrastructure being one of the main drivers of it. We also know from data of a study from WWF that uh, mass tourism puts significant uh, pressures on the use of resources of the Mediterranean. You can see here some data around um, water use, which is three, four times uh, more than uh, the one of residents, the contribution to marine litter, and let's say, the fact that uh, a tourist produced normally double times solid waste compared to residents. An additional uh, impact is happening nowadays. Of course, we know that we are talking now in a uh, pandemic during a sanitary crisis. But even during the COVID, um, tourism has massified a bit the impacts and the pressure on natural areas that are being overcrowded for, uh, for leisure and for I mean, the desire of people of uh, being in nature. We are sure that mass tourism is not to go, going away soon. After this crisis, the interest is of many uh, economic sector is in fast recovery of, the, of tourism. If, if all continues as expected, the estimates describe over 600 million tourism arrivals by 2030, which is a big number. Of course, uh, it's not just about impacts and threats. Tourism in this region also rep represents a huge uh, economic opportunity. We know that 95% of the economic value of sea-related uh, Mediterranean uh, tourists represent this, this amount of, uh, of value, that um, the benefit derived from the ecosystem services from tourists are estimated around uh, 17 billion euros per year, and in addition, there's a strong policy interest in creating a more sustainable, decentralized, and resilient tourism sector. And of course, in, there's an increasing in the demand towards nature destination, both at international scale, but now we're seeing it more and more also at the national and local scales. But so we saw before this overall situation of tourism in demand, but in all this scenario, where do Mediterranean protected areas stand? Are they actually taking advantage of the opportunities of tourism? Are they managing the threats correctly? Apart from some, some expect exceptions, and after having been working in this field for more than uh, 10 years, we, we were able to, to, to verify that the majority of protected areas in the destination here, Mediterranean, are facing several challenges concerning tourism, both from its managing its impacts, but also a lack of capacity of actually taking advantage of it. And this is mostly uh, related to several factors. We resume here a couple of those uh, from our experience. Mostly, uh, we can say there's a, for protected area managers, there's a lack of resources, capacities, and as well incentives uh, at their, let's say, scale to work in tourist development. They already have some, let's say, limitations around budgeting, and let's say that uh, tourism is not something that they, they address. Plus, um, there are big competitions be within the same protected areas. In the Mediterranean, our regions compete among each other. There's a lot of silos. And even within the same destination, the, the, the efforts, uh, think about marketing, are mostly looking at uh, sun and sea tourism uh, and not really trying to support uh, or promote another image for the destination. Of course, uh, there's a big 
difficulty and limitation of uh, actually reaching quality and sustainability expectations that this type of um, sustainable tourism, ecotourism, is expecting, uh, including the capacity of reaching and talking with the target markets that would, let's say, be interested in this type of offers. In addition to that, uh, there's a lack of actually consistent guidelines, tools, and shared knowledge for monitoring and being able to improve the quality and sustainability of the offer. So given these conditions, in late 2015, a group of conservation NGOs, regional authorities, and parks of the Mediterranean actually decided to join forces to support Mediterranean protected areas to create sustainable tourism products and creating a niche market experience and brand for the Mediterranean. Meat products are based in and around protected areas. They work exclusively with local communities and local service providers. They benefit conservation. They reduce the ecological footprint and try to improve the behaviors of Mediterranean travelers. And they drive models of cooperative tourism between trying to strengthen the relationship between parks and private sectors in the destinations. I would like to share with you actually a short video that we developed in the projects we've been working Meet on. Meat is the name of a community. Together. It brings together protected area managers who share their experiences and best practices, discuss standards, transfer knowledge, and transform their common difficulties into collective solutions. Il progetto Destimed con la sua semplicità, con il fatto di averci messo in condizione di lavorare concretamente nella costruzione di pacchetti, ha reso ben evidenti le grandi potenzialità che può avere un territorio e anche le grandi criticità, in modo tale da poterle superare queste criticità insieme a tutti gli altri partner del progetto. We are trying to set a standard, uh, being inspired by the principles of the MEET project and Destimed. And uh, these two projects help us really gave a great boost to the European Charter for Sustainable Development and help us to translate in tangible actions those principles. MEET gives support to protected area managers, aiming to create successful ecotourism packages and attract eco-travelers to their region. Working with the managers, Meet can help them develop a new brand to reach a new market. Ecotourism has been, has existed in the Mediterranean for a long time, but what's, uh, the reality has been that protected area managers have been developing ecotourism in isolation and without the right tools to manage the, let's say the quality and the impact of ecotourism products. Conservation organizations and the tourism industry need to work together. They don't know each other, and there needs to be something, some organization, some initiative to bring those two industries together. That's the only way we'll be able to move forward. Protected area managers are invited to unite across the MEET network and make a difference. In the long term, MEET is here to build momentum, promoting ecotourism as a viable alternative, influencing the entire tourist industry. The future of the Mediterranean is in the balance. So this was a video that all the images that you saw there were from actually one of our uh, products, Colline Metadifre and another part in Greece. So as you could see in this really nice video, we are a member-based organization. So our members are protected areas and we support protected area managers to uh, develop, manage and promote an ecotourism model for their destination protected area. We support members in building, transferring and exchanging knowledge tools and partnerships, in particular around the key steps that would lead to the setup of the meat product that you can see here in the slide. 
these steps are, and we support the parks in setting up and making sure there's an, an ecotourist clusters of local agents collaborating and working together. We help them identifying and setting up, uh, um, let's say a market ready ecotourism product. As well, we look into quality and uh, sustainability assessments and monitoring. And an additional step that we, that we offer is that we act as a brokering and marketing platform for ecotourism products through a portfolio of high quality packages and market driven strategies. So far, and thanks to the support of different projects and funding, such as the one that you could have seen before, we have been able to uh, create a set of uh, standards and monitoring tools that will ensure that our products are sustainable. We were able to define a process for ecotourist development. We worked and developed several guidelines and training materials, uh, one of which is, is going to be launched today. We are here for that. And we established several public-private, um, let's say, networks of collaboration, both at each protected area, but also at a regional scale to the establishment of Meet network. As I said before, today we are here to present you the first two models of the Meet training platform, where we will be sharing our approach to ecotourist product development and one of the monitoring tools that we are using to assess sustainability, which is the ecological footprint. Finally, um, once again, we just to reiterate how happy we are to share with you these first tools and, and materials that we have been testing in more than 30 parks in the last eight years. And let's say that our goal for the future is for all meat knowledge to be collected in a comprehensive offline platform at disposal of, at disposal of course of our members, protected areas, but also beyond. So thank you very much. And I hope you will enjoy the rest of the training. Okay, Carla, if you just stop sharing your screen for a second. Perfect. Uh, okay, can you see my screen? Yeah, perfect. So thanks so much for that, Carla. I think your presentation really gave us a good overview of the work that Mies is doing across the Mediterranean. Um, as I said before, if any of you have specific questions for Carla, write them in the chat and we'll get back to them at the end of the presentations. Um, just before we start to get into the next section of the webinar, uh, we're about to launch another quick poll, which should pop up on your screen now, hopefully. Um, and just take a minute to answer the question, what is the Meet Network? So we just want to make sure you're all paying attention. <laughs> Great. Oh, I can see everyone was listening. <laughs> You're all doing great, guys. <laughs> I think I mean. Yeah, I think I think everyone's got it. Okay, so that's perfect. And let's just move on. So um, as Carla mentioned in her presentation, MEET has been developing several tools to help widespread the MEET approach to ecotourism development. And one way which we've done this is by developing a new online course on ecotourism development in Mediterranean prote protected areas. So our next presenters are going to give you an overview of what this course is and the different things that you can learn by doing the modules. Um, it's going to be split into three parts and will be done by the three organizations with, which actually work together to develop this module, the Travel Foundation, IUCN Mediterranean and the Global Footprint Network. Um, so first up, we have Ben Lynham, who's the head uh, from the Travel Foundation, who's the head of strategic communications there. Um, the Travel Foundation is a sustainable tourism charity, which is based in the United Kingdom. Uh, ben works mainly in communications um, on environmental and social issues. And um, so sorry, after Ben, you'll be hear hearing from my colleague Arnau Texidor, um, who will present module one on ecotourism product development. And Arnau has a master's in international planning and sustainable development from the University College, from University College London. 
Um, he's worked in the field of conservation for several years. And uh, he also worked for the Travel Foundation. He's also worked in Cape Verde and for Bristol City Council. Um, he now works here at IUCN Mediterranean and is focused on DestiMed Plus project and also supports the Meet Network. So last but definitely not least, you'll be hearing from Alessandro Galli, who is the Mediterranean MENA program, program director at Global Footprint Network. Um, Alessandro is an expert in themes of human dependence on natural resources and ecological services. And he's also a member of the Meat Network board um, and plays a fundamental part in our Meat Network community. So I'm just going to stop sharing now and pass the screen over to Ben. So he can do his part. Thanks, Natalie. Uh, I hope I'm sharing my screen now. Um, okay, so I'm just going to give you um, a brief overview of um, of the courses before um, before you can do a bit of a, a deeper dive into them. Um, so Carla already um, has mentioned that there um, are many challenges uh, facing Mediterranean protected areas uh, when developing uh, ecotourism products. And so as DestiMed Plus got underway um, uh, uh, early last year, we um, conducted a needs analysis um, of, uh, of the capacity of our stakeholders and identified several knowledge gaps um, that we wanted to focus on. Uh, so these were centered around um, the fact that the tourism product is very complex, actually, and requires um, a lot of collaboration across a diverse set of stakeholders. Secondly, that um, uh, it was important to meet the specific market needs of ecotourists, uh, and that's actually quite a specialist uh, knowledge and competence. And thirdly, uh, that measuring and monitoring tourism impacts is incredibly important um, for the sustainable development of tourism and is a real integral part of the uh, meat process. So um, our approach was to help stakeholders in the ecotourism sector to overcome those challenges and fill those gaps um, with the right tools and resources. And that's where meat comes in. So by bringing together all the previous experience um, that Meet, Meet had and converting some of the face-to-face -face trainings that had already been developed, uh, Meet um, uh, developed an online training course um, to fill the knowledge gaps and allow protected areas all around the Mediterranean and beyond, if need be, to learn about the Meet approach and apply the process in their own regions and contexts. Um, so this course is designed for protected area staff in charge of tourism development. Um, it's for local tourism boards, for local development groups, for local tour operators, and anyone who's interested in bringing tried and tested best practice ecotourism design into their protected, uh, um, protected area destinations. So today we're presenting the first two modules that have been developed that go a long way to filling those knowledge gaps. So the first one is around product development, and the second one is around, around the ecological footprint. These modules respond to, to the steps two and three of the MEET approach that Carla um, showed, um, showed us all before in the presentation. Um, and we will develop more modules going forwards, focusing on uh, some of the other components of the MEET approach, um, such as uh, monitoring around social and economic impacts, of ecotourism products and also uh, gaining greater market access. So firstly, I wanted to emphasize that these training courses are absolutely free and freely accessible. Um, anyone can register and access the modules and there'll be more on how to do that later. Uh, secondly, um, we were really um, uh, keen to make sure that the uh, lessons that we uh, give within the courses are accessible to everyone, regardless of um, their specialism, of their experience or background. So we've taken uh, what's, what is a very complex methodology that sits at the heart of the MEET model and made it accessible, we hope, and perhaps even uh, a little bit fun. Um, so we've used a range of techniques to help you build your knowledge and check your understanding. We have quizzes, tests and games and videos and other exercises. Um, and this is based on what we know works for professional learning and development, and uh, it should be both practical and useful. Uh, so it's a unique learning opportunity. Um, you can learn about a method of ecotourism eco development. Um, it's been developed by experts and it's been proved successful it's already tried and tested in, in over 40 protected areas. 
Okay, so I think we'll now pass over to Arnau. Maybe Ben, if you stop sharing your screen. Yeah. That was great though, thank you. <laughs> okay, um, hello everyone. So I'll just start presenting. Okay, so thanks a lot, Ben, for introducing the, the training. So I will, as he was mentioning, I will focus uh, the presentation in this first module. Uh, I will try to kind of give you a, a taster of what you will find in the, um, in the training. Uh, without further ado, uh, so basically what we are trying to do here is uh, working on, on product development. And Carla mentioned in the beginning a bit other pillars that are sitting be below uh, the MEET method. Um, so basically, we'll develop a product that it's uh, done in a participatory way. Also, where I mean it to be market orientated, so not just uh, something that is uh, supply based, but that it's kind of have a clear uh, market target. And we're also trying to ensure that the sustainability and quality criteria are taken into account. So what do we mean in this context by product development? So for me, uh, product development comes to meet a multi-day package product. So it's not a standalone product. Um, the reason for that is that we believe that it can bring a series of benefits from developing more meaningful relationships with local communities, with nature. We also believe um, it can be a way to ensure that the, the benefits uh, for economic development in the, in the local region uh, stay there. And also a tour operator, a local tour operator that is running the operation can ensure the quality of the different elements and also their sustainability. And basically what we do with this uh, ecotourism development product training is to give a step-by-step -step process on how to do this product. Hopefully in a kind of like uh, an engaging way, I will now walk you through in a way the different steps that the training walks you through to develop a final product like the ones that you can see on the right side. So kind of a, a finished itinerary that uh, tours that can, that can be taken. So the training, uh, the module is divided in, in three lessons. One is to set the stage before packaging the different components of the product. And then the second is moving into kind of understanding these different components and, and how to select them. And the third one is how to ensure that the, the product is fit for purpose. And this is far to break it down. And this way I will show you what's in the training and also uh, kind of give you a feel for what a meat product means. So to start with, there's a, a quick explanation about what it means uh, by ecotourism package, product, and itinerary, and just to make sure that the concepts are clear for all the different stakeholders that get involved in the process. The second section covers what is the role of the local ecotourism cluster that Carla was mentioning, how to ensure that the process is participatory, that different actors are included across the supply chain, but also like potential um, other stakeholders that are um, impacted by the, by the tourism product. And a really important feature of the, the approach is that there is a clear market that we are targeting, obviously with uh, nuances depending on the destination and the current context, for example, make it different, but there is already a, a strong case for targeting the experiential tourism market. So in general, it could be seen like uh, you know, 60 plus, 50 plus uh, tourists from Northwestern Europe, uh, also, we have been looking to the Americas, but uh, the important one is that there is a specific set of activities that are targeting their, this type of customer. And the other consideration before starting to package the product is to be aware that there is a standards for the product that need to be taken into account from the outset in terms of ensuring that conservation, uh, uh, conservation objectives are respected and the participation is guaranteed and the type of product that is being developed is the, the one we're looking for. Um, the second part of the training is probably like the core of the, the meat products and it's about how to package these different components. So this is kind of like seen here in this image about the different elements uh, and different kind of like elements in the supply chain of, of one of these products. And basically the, tra the training goes step by step in these different components and how to select, uh, identify and select suppliers and uh, you know, service providers that could fit into this, into this uh, product. So to start with, uh, it looks at the different activities that go to the target market. It's mainly about soft adventure, culture, uh, nature-based activities that fit with the, with the mid-brand and values. Um, it 
the training also like walks you through on how to select appropriate accommodation for this target market. And another aspect that obviously in the Mediterranean is extremely important is the gastronomy and how to select, identify the right uh, food providers and the type of food experiences that uh, the package should contain. And then finally, also is looking at how, uh, you know, best to integrate soft transportation systems or how to ensure that the, the transportation and transfer are done in the most efficient way. And then finally, we move uh, in the third lesson that it's about making sure that what we're doing is fit for purpose. So both in terms of sustainability and in terms of quality when we are looking into the market. So really important component, obviously, in an ecotourism product is everything about interpretation, about interpreting natural spaces and, and nature and conservation, but also ensuring that the tourists have a good experience with a, with a competent tour leader, with competent guides that manage to create the storytelling that's uh, sitting behind uh, the, the protected area and ensuring that the, the customer experience is, is optimal. Obviously, uh, as we were mentioning, there will be also a strong case for ensuring that the product is taking best practice in terms of conservation and sustainability. And also obviously in terms of health and safety and security, uh, especially when we're targeting international markets and uh, these are all really important. And finally, we're gonna look at the, and, uh, at the key component uh, uh, of, of the meat products is uh, this storytelling, these uh, great uh, places and people that you can find in the Mediterranean, how to make sure that the product is capturing that and that uh, the products are communicated widely um, the values and the qualities of these products. So hopefully this has been uh, it's a like, good taster and you feel uh, that it's something that you would like to, to learn more about the training. Uh, just quickly, um, why do you think it would be interesting for, for you or for you know, other colleagues and, and stakeholders uh, who take the training? We believe the approach is, is relevant for, for many stakeholders. To start with, obviously, with the, the protected areas, we believe it's a way that uh, you know, they can work better with tourism, uh, making something that the conservation is at, at its heart. And also it's a way to show leadership uh, locally that they are taking a step toward the sustainable development of the territory. And obviously as well, like from the other side, from the tourism sector, again, it's a, it's a, a way to find a framework for a partnership with the public sector um, and to work in, in new products. Sometimes, you know, maybe local DMCs, local organizations that want to differentiate, want to move into new areas, uh, uh, to work in a product that already have a clear market orientation and uh, it's aimed to be viable, but also have a strong, a strong sustainability foundations. But not to forget, this also can be really useful for local development organizations, uh, community organizations that want to be involved in more participatory uh, tourism. Um, also, they want to make sure that the tourism impacts are measured, the positives and the, and, and the negatives. And finally, for destination managers, uh, when thinking about the structuring new offer, uh, finding through the mid network new promotional channels to ensure that what they are doing, it, it's out there and also to find a, a good context for collaboration uh, and continuous improvement of work with tourism and conservation. Um, that's all from me. So uh, thanks a lot for your attention and hopefully that was useful. Okay, great. Thanks, Arnau. I think we're passing over to Alessandro. You can see he's sharing the screen. Ale, I think you're on mute. There we go. Okay, can you hear me and see the screen? Yes. Okay, well, they just decided to start construction work behind me, so I hope you're not going to hear the noise. Uh, so I'm going to quickly present the second module that you will find uh, in the course, which is about measuring the ecological footprint of, uh, of your um, ecotourism offer. So <clears throat> before I, I speak about this, I would like to step uh, back one second and, and basically show you, um, okay, one second. okay, start from the context in which we are looking at this, uh, at this information. We are increasingly seeing that the world has changed and we have shifted from a world that many define as an empty world, a world that was full of resources but 
empty of humans and, and man-made capital to an, uh, a new context, the one of today, which people define Anthropocene, where humans have overcrowded the, the planet and basically the natural capital and the um, resources that the ecosystems provide are becoming the limiting factor to our societies. Now, this is not just uh, a qualitative statement, but can actually be measured. And one of the way in which this shift in the human environment relationship can be measured is through the ecological footprint. And this tool, um, maybe many of you have heard around August this year, for instance, the announcement about the Earth Overshoot Day allows us to, uh, to measure how much we are demanding uh, from the planet uh, resources. So um, the, the tool is actually telling us that right now at the global level, we are consuming the, equal, the equivalent of 1.6 planet worth of resources. So we are living within this context. Now you might be wondering why this is important for us and why this is important for um, for an ecotourism uh, product development. Well, uh, let me say that <clears throat> uh, this is important because the goods and services that are at the basis of the human societies are provided by healthy and functioning ecosystems. And access to the resources and services that these healthy ecosystems provide are really at the basis of each single uh, human activity, including tourism. And, and the, the last point very important to make is a known adagio that I'm sure all of you uh, have heard many times is that you cannot manage what you do not uh, measure. So when we embarked in the uh, first MIT project and then in Destimed, we, we wanted to uh, be able to quantify uh, the impact caused on the environment by uh, ecotourism packages and not just assume that by definition, ecotourism is sustainable. So it is very important to measure and it is especially important to measure the relationship with the ecosystems that we have in an ecotourism uh, context where I mean, the, the landscape and the ecosystems are really at the core of the, of the tourism offer. So what are the benefits of this uh, measurement of monitoring the, the impact placed on the environment? Uh, we see uh, benefit from, uh, for, for many different stakeholders involved, all those involved in the local ecotourism cluster that Carla mentioned at the beginning. So there is um, a value added for protected area managers because they can understand what is the environmental impact of the products they are putting on the market. There is also um, a value added for the local suppliers, meaning all those businesses, family operated businesses that are contributing to the offer. Because by helping, by measuring their footprint and helping them to reduce the footprint of the service they provide, we also help them optimize their cost uh, of uh, operating their business. Um, we give also the possibility to these uh, local businesses to enter as pioneer in new markets and increase their resilience, which is especially important right now. And then the value added of monitoring um, the consequence of these touring activities for tour operator or for DMOs is that they can be able to attract in the protected areas, I mean, in their territory, in the destination, tourists that leave a lighter footprint uh, behind them. So um, in terms of the structure of, uh, of the module two on the ecological footprint, um, the module is structured to have four different lessons. And these four lessons provide you the following key information. First of all, what is the ecological footprint? Second, how you can assess the ecological footprint of an ecotourism package. Third, very important, what data are needed for assessing the footprint of an ecotourism package and how to go about collecting them? Because the reality uh, is that 
many of the data that are needed for the assessment are simply not easily available on statistics. So they need to be collected working together with the um, service provider. Through these four lessons, you will also learn about uh, case studies. So what experience from previous users from meet and estimate uh, projects and how they have used uh, this monitoring tool to help reduce the footprint of their offer. You, can, uh, you will also learn about the tools that are available for the assessment. So for instance, we have developed an online and uh, freely uh, accessible uh, ecotourism footprint calculator that you can use yourself uh, to assess the footprint of your, uh, of your offer. Uh, you will also learn the type of results and recommendation that the, that the footprint assessment provides and how they can guide you in reducing the environmental impact of your offer without necessarily uh, reducing the quality of the product. So these are all the information that uh, you will be able to learn through um, the four lessons. Uh, thank you. Okay, great. Thanks so much, Alessandro. Um, and also to Ben and Arnau for explaining all of that. I think you guys gave us some really great insight into this new online course that Meet has developed, you know, what our students could learn from the two modules. Um, so it was really interesting. If anyone has any questions about this, again, just put them in the chat and we're going to circle back to them in a moment. Um, before we move on to the next section, which is all going to be about where you can actually register for the course, uh, we have another quick poll for you to answer, which will just take a minute, so it should pop up on your screen. We're really trying to keep you guys engaged today, so I hope it's working. That's great. So it seems like we're getting a positive reaction. <laughs> okay, that's great. It looks like most people I think have answered now. So we'll just end the poll. But thanks for giving us your feedback. It's really helpful. Um, I'll now pass the floor over to Michelle Kotelski, who is from the Nature Conservancy and works for the conservation training e-learning platform and she's going to show you uh, more about how you can access the new meet network course which is actually hosted on this platform um, just a little bit about michelle she's a senior e-learning designer at the nature conservancy and she spent the past 14 years working in adult education as an instructor and a developer of all things to do with online training online and in person i think actually um, so i'll just pass it to you and stop sharing Great. Hello. So now that you all have learned about this amazing training, how do you access it, right? So that's where we'll step in. I'm hoping you all can see the screen. Just a thumbs up. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, so the website that you're going to go to in order to access the training is called conservationtraining.org. I have it loaded right here. Um, and the first thing you'll need to do is create an account. So you're going to want to do a sign up. And here uh, we have a create a new account. The only thing that we, oh, I'm sorry, I'm logged in. The only thing that we ask for is a first name, last name, and email address. We do not email you at all. It's just a way that you can track your records. So if you'd like to fill out more information, please feel free to do so. Once you've created your account, you'll get a confirmation email. And then you're just to verify that the email is you know, a real email. And then you're able to log right in. Um, once there, if you have any questions, we have a help button right up here. And under help, there is an email address right here. And this actually comes to our team. There's three folks that manage it. So you can always reach out to us if you ever have a problem with logging in or, or finding anything. So going back to the dashboard, there's a couple of places that you can go to in order to find this particular course. One, I added a button right here at the bottom. So we made it very simple to find. You can also do a course search for meat and it will come up right here. 
And then lastly, you can browse categories and you can see we have several different um, uh, trainings on here all for free uh, that you can go into and we have right under IUCN, we have it there as well. So we have it kind of nested in several places. Once you get logged in, once you click it, you just click enroll me, it will log you in. And now you're set up to go ahead and start your training. So that the way that this is set up is you have a couple of different um, areas that you need to go to. First, we have some information about the course. When you scroll down, we have these different tabs that get you started. So we have our preparation, kind of an introduction to the course. Then you have your module one, which we were just discussing and then all the different lessons. In order to go into the lesson, you click on it. You can see right now that I have no check marks here, which means I haven't completed it. Once I go in and start going through it, I will get a check mark that shows that you have completed. And that will make sense here in just a minute when I show you the, the certificate. So I'm in the first lesson. You can go ahead and start working through and then use the arrows or use the navigation on the left-hand side to, to go through your um, lessons. So scrolling down, I'm going to go down. We then go into, you can see your three lessons, module two. It's built very similarly. We can go through. There is an exercise in here um, as well. And then lastly, we have our certification. And as you can see, <laughs> I have this set up where you do have to complete everything up, up above. So getting those little check marks next to each lesson um, will then start eliminating all of these restrictions. And once you have completed it, you can then download a certificate of completion. Um, and then that will be stored on your record here of learning. Um, and it's a nice thing that you can add into your portfolio or you can add into um, a lot of work transcripts, something like that. Uh, if you have any questions about the course, you know, certainly reach out to us. It's that email address, that CTP training. We are, sorry, it's very long, let me scroll up. It's also at the top um, here as well for technical support. Um, if you ever have any issues with something not loading, please let us know and we'll be happy to help you. And that is kind of the very quick, how do you get in, log in and view the training? Does anyone have any questions in regards to, to that? So I think if you have any questions, just pop them in the chat. Yep. Um, okay. But that's great. Thank you so much, Michelle. I hope that's really clear for everyone. Um, as Michelle just showed you, the, the platform really is very easy to use and navigate through, but uh, don't hesitate to ask either uh, conservation training or you can email us as well if you have any more sort of content related questions about that while you're going through it. Um, finally, before we go into the question section of the webinar, we're going to do, oh, sorry, I'm not showing my screen, one moment. Doesn't really matter. <laughs> We're gonna do a, um, just go through a few practical details about the Meet Network online course. So some questions you might have regarding it. As Michelle said, um, where can you register for the course? You can register on conservationtraining.org. Um, what type of course is, is it? It's a self-paced style course, which basically means that there's no sort of handheld support or mentoring, um, but you can do it in your own time at your own pace which might suit people who are busy professionals. Um, the course is in English. And at the moment, we are looking into options of translating it into other um, more regional Mediterranean languages, such as French, Spanish, or Arabic. Um, and it's something we really want to do, but it's not available yet. So just to give you an idea, we've spoken a lot about this course today, but what happens after you take the course? So if you are a protected area member that's interested if you are a protected area that's interested in becoming a MEET member, um, what we do is go a bit further than the support provided through the online training. And we give our members support um, through sort of handheld mentorship, detailed feedback, um, ag additional guidance, all to do with this MEET approach and this ecotourism product development process, um, just to make sure that uh, you can you basically can develop the best ecotourism product for your protected area that you possibly can. Um, also, just to mention before we go into questions, that um, if you do want some more information about meat or anything that you've heard today, please contact us at info at medecotourism.org. The email is on the bottom of all the slides, um, also on our website. Um, and we here at the Meat Secretariat will respond to all your questions. 
We also wanted to, uh, we also might put you in touch with our new Meet Network ambassadors who uh, I think some of us have joined us here today. And this Meet Ambassador initiative is new for the Meet Network. We recently launched it. Um, our Meet Ambassadors are regional focal points for the network. And as you can see, they're based all around the Mediterranean. Um, and they're basically there to support you with any meat needs at a regional level. Um, so get in touch with us and we might put you in touch with one of our ambassadors. So we'll now go on to the questions portion of the webinar. Um, and as I said before, if you have any questions, just put them in the Zoom chat, or I think some of you may have the function to raise your hand on Zoom, if not just maybe put your name in the Zoom chat and we'll call out to you. But let's see how this goes. I can't actually see the chat. Uh, I think someone's just asked if the trainings are free. So yes, they are definitely free. Um, so someone's asking, could we receive this presentation by email? And the answer is yes, I'm going to be sending everyone who registered for the training today a follow-up email after the webinar with all the links and information about Meet, information about the online trainings um, that you need. So. Anyone else with any questions? How many protected areas are there in Europe? I'm gonna direct this question to Kyla. I think she's probably- I, I, don't, I don't have a, an answer. I would say thousands, thousands. Yeah, especially because there's this network of protected areas, which is called Natura 2000, that is really representative of many habitats of the area. You're on mute, Natalie. Sorry about that. Um, so I was just reading through some of the questions in the chat that are coming up. Um, someone said that there's 27,000 Natura 2000 sites, <laughs> which is great. Love these facts, guys. Um, how many, oh yeah, what definition of ecotourism do you use? So I think Kyla is responding to that one. That's great. We have a question from Nahed who said, I noticed that on the platform, we get to choose meet trainings. Are there any other subjects or trainings? So at the moment, we just have two online modules uh, which are available through the platform. How many protected managers, protected area managers have taken the course? Yeah, I, that's one that the one I answer that, and I'm sharing the remaining one. Okay, great. Okay, yeah, great. I'm going to put the link to a, to a manual that we also prepared. Yeah, it's presenting all our approach in a more detailed way. I just wanted to um, answer the question about the, the different training. So the idea would be probably in a year's time or we are working towards having some extra modules covering other topics around participatory planning and around uh, marketing and communication so that would be part, hopefully, of the portfolio. Uh, it's something that is going to likely be live end of next year. That's great. Now, so someone has also asked, um, I think this is a good question, assuming the course has relevance for those not based, um, does the course have relevance for those who are based outside of the Mediterranean, even though it is med centric? So you are right, it is med centric. I don't know, Carla, if you wanted to. Sorry. Um, so someone has asked if the course is relevant and the meat approach for those who are outside of the Mediterranean. Yep. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, of course, there are some specificities around uh, 
was the Mediterranean destination, such as the type of maybe um, experiences to be promoted or the, the focus on gastronomy and certain type of things. But I would say that it's the process for it is valid everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. It's very, it's a very adaptable approach. Got lots of questions coming in now. So another one is, do you promote ecotourism certification programs? Uh, I don't know if you want to answer that one. Um, it refers to a certification for businesses or for trainees. I'm, I'm not sure what, what it refers to. Yes, sir. No, we are not issuing certification for destinations. That's, uh, no, we, we don't do it. And I think there is also a question about the European Charter. So yeah, I can I can get that. So yes, absolutely. Actually, the 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 idea of this comes from the framework of the U European Charter for Sustainable Tourism needs being like a specific activity within the strategy for tourist development of the of the um, european charter so several of our members are actually members of uh, of the europark network and, and we work in close co cooperation with them okay great um i think we have time for one or two more questions so there's a question here. Do protected area managers um, all have departments which focus specifically on tourism or is it uh, independent from the role of protected areas? No, Carla, Arnau, Alessandro, if any that, of you. That's a, a mix. The, some parks which have the, the, the let's say, uh, budget availability do have and some, project, let's say, tourist dedicated departments. But normally not, and I'm not. I'm not sure there are external entities with managed tours for for protected areas. Ever. There might be. I mean, it's, it's pretty complex in here. Great, thanks, Carla. Okay, so we have one more question um, before we wrap up for today. So someone asked, "Are you promoting the course to?" Um, I guess academia, so sort of university tourism students. And I would say that the course is just open to everyone. So anyone can take it, even though it is really focused towards Mediterranean protected areas and people who are really working in the industry. Um, I think it's really relevant and interesting for anyone, or that's what we hope at least. So uh, yes, would be the answer to your question. We're just gonna stop the question section now for a moment. But we will keep the Zoom open for an extra 10 or 15 minutes after I just do this last wrap up slide so that you can all, if anyone wants to stay and ask any extra questions, we'll, we'll be here to answer them. So just moving on to our last bit, we just wanna say thank you so much for everyone who's come today. We've really enjoyed this experience of sharing everything about Meet With You. Um, we're also going to do one last uh, poll. <laughs> I promise it's the last one for today. Um, just a little bit of feedback on... Natalie, <clears throat> yeah? be before you launch the, the poll, sorry, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, I know you, you are going to close, but just want to say that uh, people are asking about the, the footprint tool. Um, and Carla has shared the link just to say that within the the platform or even in the link that Carla has shared, there is a video tutorial, like seven, eight minutes where you can, you are guided through the use of these calculators. So there is no time to, to share these now in the, in the webinar, but you can look at the tutorial and there are like guidelines on how to use it. And the tool is customized to be applicable to all the Mediterranean countries. I mean, PA, protected areas within all Mediterranean countries, of course. Great, thank you so much, Ali, and thank, thanks for flagging that. I think that's really helpful for people. Um, so yeah, to wrap up, we're just gonna do one final poll to see how everyone thought today went. Um, so the poll just reads, in light of everything you've learned today, which of the following are you most likely to do? So you can have multiple choice here and select all or none. Uh, it's completely up to you. I know we've just run a tiny bit over time, but hopefully that's all right. 
so whilst you answer the poll, as I was saying, uh, just thanks to everyone who's joined us here today. Um, up on the slide in front of you, which, as I said, I'll share after the webinar, we've got some key information. So um, the link to the conservation training platform, which Michelle presented to you. Also the link to our Meet Network website, where you can find all the information that we've covered today. Um, if you have any burning questions or inquiries about membership, partnership, collaboration with open to all of them. We definitely want to hear from you. So contact us at info at um, Also, if you enjoyed the webinar today, feel free to post about it on social media um, and also follow us on social media. I've put all our handles up on the screen. Just remember to tag us. Um, and finally, meet or well, penultimately, um, meet is currently involved in a project called DestiMed Plus and a lot of the the things which are going on in, in Dusty Med Plus, we also share on our social media. Um, and if you enjoyed hearing about what we're doing today, you might also find um, reading about the project interesting. So I've put the link to our website, to the project website up on the slide. And finally, uh, a big thank you to our donor, Malva Foundation for Nature, who uh, basically made all of this possible through the learning grants, um, which allowed us to develop the online platform. So, Thank you very much. And as I said, we'll hang around for another 10 minutes just in case anyone else has some questions. But thanks so much to everyone.